Okay, 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 12. Solomon is king now. David has died. Solomon sits on the throne. Verse 13, rebellion. 13 in the Bible is rebellion. Watch the numbers in the Bible. Now, I'm not going to say the chapter and the verse numbers are inspired by God that because they came much later on, but you watch the verses in the chapter numbers. They're pretty much right on. Now, I'm not going to say the words of heaven are going to have chapter and verse, but it's interesting. Verse 13, another rebellion. Check out 16, 11. Chapter 16, verse 11. Check out verse 13. They're interesting. Check out 666. And Adonijah, the son of Haggadah, one of David's wives, came to Bathsheba, another wife of David. Now Adonijah is not the son of Bathsheba, but the son of Haggad, the mother of Solomon. Does that sound familiar to you? Does that sound like Mary. that's the Roman Catholic Mary? See, we can't get to Solomon because he's mean, wicked, and cruel. I know what he's going to say. Oh, Bathsheba, you're so nice. You're so we the mother of Solomon and she said comest thou peacefully you don't trust this guy and he said peacefully he said moreover I have somewhat to say unto thee and she said say on and he said thou knowest the kingdom is mine liar it's not yours and you're going to say in a moment it is not yours and that all Israel set their faces on me. Liar, you only had a selected people you invited to that buffet. You didn't call everybody. You left people out. All Israel? That's a lie. That I should reign. That was your motive. How be it the kingdom is churned about. Rebellion. And it has become my brothers. Okay, so Solomon... And Adonijah, though different mothers, are brothers. For it was his from the Lord. And why did you say it was yours? The kingdom is mine, but it's his from the Lord. Then it's not yours. You lied to her. And you know full right that Solomon belongs on that throne because of God. So, <clears throat> what's the problem? Guy doesn't care what the Lord said. He's angry. He didn't get what he wanted. He's he's on the floor at the toy store, banging his feet and banging his legs and crying because he can't get the cake he wants. And I can't go to Solomon myself because I ain't got I, I ain't man enough to go to Solomon, and so I'm gonna go to mom. And that's what the Catholic Church teaches, because Jesus is so wicked and cruel that he's not gonna answer any of your prayers, but you go through mom. Even though you're a flat out liar. And God has established. But even though God established. I don't like what God said. We'll go through to the mother. And now I ask one petition of thee. Deny me not. And she said unto him. Say on. And he said speak I pray thee. I, yeah pray thee unto Solomon the king. That's exactly what the precision Catholics have on Mary. Go to the king, your son. For he will not say thee nay. That's a kind of bold statement. That he give me Abishagag, the Shinnamite, to wife. Let's look at chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Now, what he's about to do, he's wrong. In two ways. Chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. Here's the era. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coasts of Israel. And found Agashag the Shunammite. There she is and brought her to the king. King's old. He has no heat. He can't get body temperature. So we're going to get a young woman. We're going to have him lay next to her. And the damsel was very fair and cherished the king. And ministered unto her. But the king knew her not. That's what Abishag doesn't know. What's he trying to do? Of all David's wives, here's a woman that's young enough for him. They're all old. David's old. David just died of old age. 
So Abishai can't look at Bathsheba. She's old and she's working with her. Can't, can't look at anybody. Can't go with uh, Haggad. That's his mother. That's cruel. So of all the young women in the throne of David, the concubine, here's this Abishai. So what he's doing, he's saying, Bathsheba, if you will talk to your son about me having her as my wife, then I got, then under the collar, under the table, under the blanket, I have rights to that throne because I have married the queen. Now the problem is, Abishag was not a wife of David. And the but Bible she records. She might have a lot of inside information too that he might want. That too. But it's not David's wife. That's where he went wrong. And he figures, well, if I can get in cahoots by marriage. You ever hear of somebody ever marrying somebody because somebody was in such a position? That's nothing new under the sun. That's in the Bible. He's thinking the Abish guy's got that right to, to the throne. And he don't. The Bible, that's why the Bible said, and David knew her not. It's not a marriage. All she was was a servant to David. And Bathsheba said, well, well, I will speak for thee unto the king. And I'm just wondering why she didn't blast him right there. I'm going to think that she doesn't know what the plot is. And Bathsheba therefore went unto King Solomon. Now here comes where the happy Catholic. To speak unto him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her. This is where the Catholics love. And bowed himself unto her. They speak that Jesus will bow himself down to marry his mother. And sat down on his throne and caused a seat to be set for the king's mother. And she sat on the right hand of Solomon. So the Catholics will steal this between Solomon and Mary. And put it with Jesus and Mary. And they can say, well, see, the scriptures, see, that, that, that's the position. Of, I mean, you got to pervert it. You realize you'll find, I seen somebody the other day on my Facebook, they posted, a, there was, they were at this place and there was a statue of Mary and he was amazed that Mary is standing on a snake. Genesis 3.15. Well, if you're going to take Genesis 3.15, the, the seed of the woman, which is a male, and you're going to apply that to Mary, who's going to conquer and bruise the head of the serpent, why not mess with Second, uh, first Kings 2. Now, you know what you can do nicely with a Roman Catholic? You talk to him. Any Catholic. I say Roman because that's what I was. It comes out of my mouth. Say, do you lift up Mary? And they, they will definitely say yes if they're a true Catholic. You, you think that, you know, if you were to go to Mary and she would talk to Jesus for you or any sinner on week? Yeah, definitely. Can I show you that in the Bible? Wow, you can. Yeah, sure. I don't. And then you take them over here, First Kings two, and read it. And then when you're done reading where we left off, say, well, where do you see Mary? Where do you see Jesus? The type of Jesus David has died. <laughs> He's gone. And you. You're not going to get a lot of anyway, but you're going to spark an interest. Then run over to Matthew 28 and show, call no man your father. And that's all you really, you can plant that seed in heart of doubt of, wait a minute, yeah. You can get open scripture with a Catholic. You're able to get them to be saved by the word of God through Jesus Christ. That's what the Catholic Church doesn't want. Doesn't want you to open your Bible. They would hate me doing this, this message. So please get these videos out to Catholics. So himself on turn sat down on his throne and caused a seat to be set for the king's mother. And she sat on his right hand. Now I don't know if Solomon is married right now, but he's put his mother. He's honoring his mother. He is respecting his mother. He's respecting her for age. She's got a lot of wisdom. Then she said, I desire one small petition. Notice how she added the small in there. 
Ellen Isaac said, I, I asked one petition. She said, I asked you one small petition of this. I don't think she has an idea what she's going to ask. I pray thee, say me not nay. She, I'm going to assume, I'm going to say 98%. If I'm wrong, I'll confess it in 1 John 1 9. Is I don't think she realized what was just asked by Ananias. Say nay. And the king said unto her, Ask on, my mother, for I will not say thee nay. <laughs> We always open our mouth and put our foot in it, don't we? It's human nature. The Bible, that's why people don't like to read the Bible. Here's a guy. Let's say every time he opens up his mouth, he sticks his foot in it. Oh, that's what I do. And then look at the trouble that follows. I'm guilty of that. And she said, let Abishag, the Shunammite, be given to Ananijah, thy brother, to wife. Boom. There it is, plain and simple. And King Solomon answered and said unto his mother. Now he's not going to say her name. Why does thou ask Abishai the Shumite for Anijah? Ask for him the kingdom also. Okay. See, again, what he's thinking that this woman is married to David. Ha <laughs> ha, I can get the kingdom. And I wanted the lights come on for Bathsheba. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Ask for the kingdom also. That's what he's asking for. Here's the Abish guy. And then next, give me the kingdom. I got the white, which is not a white. Ask for the kingdom also. For he's my elder brother. Now look at that. Psalm is saying by age, he, he, he desires, and this throne is his. By age. But by God. Out of the old mouth of Ananijah, it was his from the Lord. God put Solomon on that throne. Now, should I go ahead and say this, or should I just go on and bypass it and put away all the biblical sibling wimpy Baptists in the, in, in the garbage? If you don't like the President of the United States, God put him on the throne. Okay? The Bible says that God set it up and he takes down. We're told to honor and respect the rulers. That's all I'm going to say. All right, so he's my other brother, even for him. And for Abiathar the priest. And for Joab the son of Zariah. Now, first chapter 1, verse 5. Chapter 1, verse 5. Why did he mention these names? He's going to deal with them in a moment, but chapter 1, verse 5. Solomon's got wits. And Ananias, the son of Hagarith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. He prepared him chariots and horsemen, and fifty men to run before him. And his father had not despised him at any time in saying, What hast thou done? Why hast thou done so? And we read earlier, it looks like David had no idea. By Nathan. And he was, and also was a very goodly man. And his mother bare him after Absalom. And by age we look at, he's next in line for the throne. It would have been Absalom, but he blew it. Okay? But God, but we're not talking and he conferred with Joab, the, the son of Zariah, and with Abiathar, the priest. And they followed Ananias, helped him. But Zadok, the priest, Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, you're going to see Benaniah again. And Nathan, the prophet, and Shimei, Relay, and the mighty man, and Tom. They, he didn't invite those. But Joab and Abiathar. So what Solomon is acknowledging before his mother, Bathsheba, here on the throne is, all right, he wants this woman. Why don't you just ask for the kingdom? And then he'll put Joab in charge and Abiathar in charge. They won't be under the penalty of religion. You know what's going to happen in the rest of this chapter? Abiathar goes bye-bye. Joab goes to hell. And some of the commentaries, and I don't know if it's right or wrong, they're saying that with this statement here that Joab and Abiathar has talked to Abinijah and came up with this scheme. Because they know that Solomon is now 
He's doing the deeds of David, his father, and includes killing. David said, hey, Shimei, you better take care of him. And then with Abijah, the last words that Solomon told to him, uh, in chapter 1, verse 53, the last words. So Solomon sat, and they brought him down from the altar, and he came and bowed himself to King Solomon. And Solomon said unto him, Go to thy house. But verse 52, and Solomon said, If he will show him a worthy man, there shall not a hair of his head fall to the earth. But if wickedness shall be found in him, he shall die. Well, what's the wickedness? He's now trying to assert the authority of Solomon. And Solomon has already put the words out, you better not. I'm not going to take it. My father may have. I saw the troubles my father went through with Absalom. You ain't going to do that to me. So, with Abiathar and Joab being mentioned by Solomon, it looks like there's a, there's a coy again happening. He thinks they're all a part of this thing that started the chapter off. Then King Solomon swear by the Lord. This is an oath. This is the holiest oath a Jew can make. You don't swear by anything else. Saying, God do so to me, and more also, if Adonijah has not spoken this word against his own life. Now therefore, as the Lord liveth, which has established me, the king, and set me on the throne of David, my father. Now he's saying this to Bathsheba. I'm established here by God. Bathsheba knows that. Nathan knows that. Zadok knows that. Adonijah knows that. Verse 15. It's from the Lord. And who has made me an house as he, God, he is God, promised. Adonai shall be put to death this day. And King Solomon sent by the hand of Benaiah, there he is, the son of Jehoiada, and he fell upon him that he died. That's the fourth lamb. Remember David said four lambs? When Gad, uh, yeah, when Gad came to him? That's the fourth lamb. And that lamb died after David died. The baby died. Um, Ammon died. So, uh, I always say Solomon for Absalom. Absalom died. They both mean peace. And now Adonijah. There's the four lambs. And that fourth lamb, again, I already said it, died after David died. You don't have to be living when God calls up the reaping and sowing of your life. And on the other hand, of a good aspect of that, let's take it something good. It's so winning. You could be dead, absent from the body and present with the Lord. And whatever you've done is still growing and still planting seeds and flowers and seeds. Or you still get the benefit. You may die in the Lord and whatever you reap and sow for righteousness might be still going on. If you brought up your children right. And you die and they go on still serving the Lord, still doing right. That's still accounted to you. And yet also, you take something like a sexually transmitted disease. You go out there and fool around and you get a sexually transmitted disease and it passes on to your children by birth. You can die. They got it. That's the fourth land. Now we're going to pick up uh, 26. We're going to stop with Joab. But verse 26, number two. And unto Abiathar the priest. Abiathar, 1 Samuel 22 20. 1 Samuel 22 20. This is Abiathar. Now, what happened is Saul has ordered the death of the priest. Doag does it. Verse 20. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, Name of Biathar, there he is. He escapes and comes to David. 
And the Bible part showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priest. And we can go back and get this. We have it in a video and audio. And David said to Abiathar, I know, I, I knew the day when Doag the Edomite was there that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life, but with me thou shalt be in safeguard. Now I think this is why the safeguard, I think this is why that Solomon is not going to kill him. And then we're going to see, again, we're going to look at another verse. But, unto Abiathar the priest said unto the king, Get thee to Ananon. Jeremiah 1.1, 1, 1, we're not going to go there, but Jeremiah 1.1, 1, 1, that's where Jeremiah is from. That's a priest town or city in the area of Benjamin. And Ananoth is the same city that one in Jeremiah dead. It's a priestly city. He's like, get out, go to Benjamin. Go to Ananoth. Unto thy own field, get to work. For thou art worthy of death. You were with Adonijah. You were with the coup. I ought to put you to death. Because thou bearest the ark of the Lord. God before David my father. He's the ones of Kohath. They are the ones that carried the instruments of God. That was their job. They didn't go out in the fields and work. But you're relieved of duty. Go out in your priestly city and go to work. Manual labor. You're not in charge of the ark. You're not in charge of the holy. You're not in charge of nothing of the furniture no more. The Lord God gave my father, and because thou hast been afflicted in all wherein my father was afflicted. So you suffered with my dad. You were with my dad. You were in an ark holder with my dad. I am not going to kill you for that reason. So Solomon thrust out Abiathar from being priest unto the Lord, that he might fulfill the word of the Lord. 1 Samuel 22:31. Going all the way back to 1 Samuel. 20 uh, 1 Samuel 2:31, excuse me. 1 Samuel 2:31. We did a long time back here. 1 Samuel 2:31 addressing Eli who would not do right. It's been many 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 years. There's not even a king in Israel. 231, Behold the days come that I, God, will cut off thy arm and the arm of thy father's house and there shall not be an old man in thy house and thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation. That's a tabernacle. And all the wealth which God shall give Israel and there shall not be an old man in thy house forever. And the man of thine whom I shall cut off from my altar shall be to consume thy eyes and to grieve thy heart and all the increase of thy house shall die in the flower of age and this shall be a sign unto thee that it shall come upon thy two sons Hophni and Phinehas in one day they shall both they shall die both of them and I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart God and in my mind, God, I will build him a sure house. He shall walk before my anointed forever. It shall come to the pass that everyone that is left in thy house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread and shall say, Put me, I pray thee, into one of the priest's office that I may eat a piece of bread. Put me into the priest. You're not there no more. And here's that prophecy here by Solomon. He puts him out. And according to that prophecy, Abiathar is going to go back to Ananoth, or wherever he goes. I don't know if he obeys that point. <laughs> Can I do something to the priestly job, please? Can I have something to do with the priestly job? Can I still retain that kind of thing? You're out. Solomon thrust out Abiathar from being the priest. That's the prophecy, 1 Samuel 2, 31 to 35. 
36. So we're going to stop right there. Adonijah is dead. Abiathar has been removed. And we're going to pick up Joab, Lord willing. We're going to pick up Shimei, Lord willing. Solomon is making one point still. He gave Adonijah the chance. Listen, you behave yourself, don't worry. He didn't behave himself. He tried to assert the authority over his throne. Solomon says, I ain't taking it. Now he has Benaniah kill Adonijah. Why? David couldn't build a temple because David had shed blood. Now I know Solomon would be charged, but the blood is not physically upon Solomon's hand. He will be able to build that temple. Abiathar. And look at this. Again, verse 27. So Solomon thrust out Abiathar bringing priests unto the Lord that he might fulfill the word of the Lord which he spanked concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh. Now, did Solomon know that? Did he know the Bible or is the Holy Spirit just saying this is extra information? Okay, if Solomon knew the scriptures, all right, I'm doing the scriptures. You're out of here. If he didn't know the scriptures on this, the Holy Spirit says Solomon is working in the direct will of God. I approve what he did to Biathar. Plain and simple. God is so great. 